So here we are in late winter and it's time to get ready for our spring garden. And what that means is, is we're gonna start making some improvements to our mason bees. Um, last year, we had a little bit of success with the mason bees, but we really had a lot of success with the leaf cutter bees. So we decided with the season getting ready to start, we wanted to upgrade our solitary bee setup and try to get even more benefits out of them this year. I uh, placed another order with crown bees and I thought I'd show you what we got. So bird guard, everybody has put in the comments how they think this is the neatest thing for our bee house. Uh, truth be told, I didn't use the thing for the majority of the year and then about a couple of weeks ago, Lisa caught a hummingbird having its way with whatever larva it could get to. So we've gone ahead and reinstalled the bird guard and I'm gonna make sure we put it on this new house. I also got some mud for the mason bees. They have to have um, mud in the close proximity. So we mix mud and keep it moist for them because this is what they cap their, their nest with. Okay, we got some Invita bee. We got some Invita bee for mason bees and some Invita bee for leaf cutter bees. If you notice, they both come with reeds. They say that even though we use those nesting blocks, that the reeds are like a visual cue to, to draw the bees to your nesting blocks. So the bigger ones are for the mason bees and the smaller ones are for the leaf cutter bees. We ended up getting a hive tool or a nesting block tool. And what this is, is this allows you to get in here and clean and scrape. They have a bigger, wider one for the mason bee block. And then they also have a smaller one for the leaf cutter bee blocks. So they've made this tool to work with their nesting blocks. And if you notice, we got a bigger box than we did before. Last year, we had one that held a single box and some reeds, but we couldn't fit two of these in here. So our plan this year is to put leaf cutter bees in this larger box with two of these nesting blocks. And then we're gonna take the mason bee block, nesting block, and put it in our existing house that you guys watched us installed last year. And if you didn't see that video, I'll put a link to it up here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and get into this bee house. We're going to jump into the box and the reeds and we're going to start harvesting our cocoons from last season's mason bees and leaf cutter bees. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off the bird guard. Really kind of not sure what I'm doing here. Any of the videos and stuff I read says that there's a lot of nasty stuff in here. So I can't wait. So we're gonna go through this together. I don't know if you guys are seeing any of this, but there is nothing but junk and bugs falling out of our bee house. So now that I have it all emptied out, Take a look at the hatchery. Again, full of a bunch of junk that we're gonna have to clean out, but I'll deal with that separately. What we're gonna need to do is go through the reeds and go through these nesting blocks. And it's windy, so all this junk that I'm trying to be careful with is flying all over the place. Um, but the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get in the reeds and find out what has a home, what's made a home in there and hasn't. So as we take this piece of shish kebab stick you'll notice that it goes right to the end of the reed because the reeds are open on one end and capped on the other. So I'm gonna start a stack over here of the reeds that are vacant. So some of these are obvious because they're capped at the end. And depending on what they're capped with, whether it's mud or leaves, that's what made its nest inside here. 
And not everything in here could be mason bees or leafcutter bees. There's a lot of other beneficial bugs that will take advantage of having the available nesting. So we went through all the reeds and we end up with 12 that have some type of nest or something in here. Some of them again are obvious based on that their caps are at the end of the tube, but some of us, some of them are not so obvious because maybe only half the tube got filled. So we're gonna dive into those, but before we do that, I wanna open up this nesting box. It's kind of windy out here, which I thought would be a pain in the butt, but to be honest, it's kind of refreshing because most of the stuff that's I didn't really want here is blown away. So not sure what to expect here either. All right, let's go ahead and crack into one. All right, so just starting to play with the tool. So one of the reasons we do this is to just make sure that we get all of the critters out here that use this box other than the bees because it's a good place of resources. They can find pollen and all kinds of stuff. So bear with me, I've never done this before. So I start to open it up and a few things I find is there's tons of insects that have made their home in there. And we see one cocoon, which there's nothing left in it. I'm gonna blame that on our hummingbirds. But then back here, I see quite a few that are good. And what I'm seeing is, is this first one is full of uh, pollen. So they leave pollen in there so that when they hatch, they have something to eat. And I'm just trying to gently get in there so I don't cause them any damage. And the leaf cutters, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the leaf cutters in one of these little bowls and then I'm going to use the other one for the mason bees. And these things are glued together pretty well. I don't want to ruin them so I'm really kind of taking my time with it. So if you see me struggling with it it's just because I'm trying to be extra careful with it. So I am not sure what these larvae are. Can you see those? So I know that I had read somewhere what the larva were, was, and I'm not 100% certain, but this is one of the reasons why you clean the thing out. So we've got some more good cocoons here. So I'm gonna go ahead and Carefully remove those. And then might as well start. Ooh, these things are brutal. So I think in the interest of the video, this stuff's got some like waxy component in it that's super hard. I think in the interest of making a decent video, I'm just gonna set these aside and clean them later. Now some of what we see in here could be pollen, but I can't tell the difference. So I'm just gonna go ahead and store them with my cocoons that we know have uh, larva in it. And then when it comes time to put them out in May, and that's when we put them out here on the leaf cutters. And we'll just make sure we didn't leave anybody behind. Whew. 
So in this last one was a bunch of these larvae. What I've noticed is the nesting materials or cocoons that they make are like glue and they're real sticky and they're hard to clean up. But this is why we clean out our nests every year. So we can get the parasites and anything that's gonna harm our cocoons and larvae uh, out of our bee house and then get all these pests out so every year we start over from scratch. All right, now that the nesting blocks are all done, we're gonna start diving into some of these tubes here. So I'm just kind of curious and taking a look from them. Again, one end is capped, is the natural end of the grass reed, and the other end is open, but in this case capped. You're gonna go ahead and split them and start pulling the thing in half. And in this case, this thing's chock full of leaf cutter bees. No pests, so this thing's kind of neat and clean, so that's kind of nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that into my stash of leaf cutters. And we'll get into the next one. My guess is based on, I thought that one looked like a mason bee, it looked like mud, but it was just dried leaves. So my guess is, is this one too will be leaf cutter. And it is. Leaves are stacked a little different. I think it has to do with how the tube is configured. What's interesting is you can see the flowers that they chose, like some of them are green, but these happen to be pink. And my guess is they come from our hibiscus. So the final tally, mason bees zero and leaf cutter bees. We've got about, I'll say 150 to 200 cocoons. Uh, with mason bees, you take the cocoons and you wash them. And then crown bees makes a, a plastic uh, bubble wrap type container that has a little bit of foam in it so you can put water in it so they don't dry out and you keep them in your fridge. The leaf cutter bees, you wrap in one of these fine mesh bags and then you store it in your shed or your garage. And then right before you think they're gonna hatch, depending on when it gets warm out, and I think it's when the temperature gets 75 degrees or above, you take them out and you can put them inside your bee house. We have this hatchery area, so we'll just dump them in there probably mid-April. And then uh, watch them start coming out and they start filling up all of your different areas. We've also purchased more leaf cutter bee cocoons and mason bee cocoons from Crown Bees. Our mason bee cocoons are gonna be here, I think mid-March, and our leaf cutters are coming about the 1st of May. So that's gonna wrap up this video. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, we love connecting with you if you have any questions. Even if we don't know the answer right off the cuff, we'll do some research and get back to you and tell you the answers that you're looking for. And the best way to help support our channel is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, on our next video, we're gonna go and start installing both bee houses so you can see how we're setting up our system this year for our bees. And thanks for watching.